Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in Katowice in Poland and there's a funny little one carriage tram just gone past. This city has a massive tram network, although well, it's not such a huge city in itself and the tram network doesn't only serve this city, it's known as the Upper Silesian Urban Area. And where I am now, this is basically the central tram crossing in the city centre. You've got trams going that way, east to west and north to south. Now, it's gonna, I'm not going to be able to over the next few days do the whole network, it's simply so big and I may have a look at other things as well. But I've just arrived here this afternoon and I'm very keen to explore. I'm thinking I might do what is the tram route that goes that way, where various routes terminate en route, but to go to the very end of that line is Route 13. So I'm going to look for tram on Route 13 and travel down there. So far I've mainly seen modern trams, except, um, well that one there is still modern, but it's a one carriage tram, which I really like. It's like a traditional, I always think of traditional trams being a one vehicle thing. I do like these more modern articulated trams. So there's a lot of different trams to see, a lot of different lines, and over the next few days I'm going to be doing a lot of tram bashing, I'm going to really explore this network. This is probably like, the closest thing we'd have had to this in the UK, perhaps imagine when, say, Leeds had trams, Leeds had trams, Wakefield had trams, Bradford had trams, and all the cities all linked together. Various cities here all linked, all tram networks linked together. So it's kind of like that. It's really probably the only place in the world where you've got a few cities with one huge tram network. So very excited about exploring it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to walk, I'm going to follow down there to where Route 13 starts and I can do a bash over the whole of Route 13. bouncing along the single track line beside the road. Hold the camera in both hands. It might be a bit more steady, um, or maybe not. We're going to soon come to the end of Route 16, where I am expecting there to be a turning loop. Further back, we came to the end of a few other routes, and there was like a roundabout in the middle of the road. So it's, I find all this quite fascinating, because you can see I'm sat at the back of the tram. They only have a driver at one end. Oh yeah, now here we are. We're just coming in to look forward. There's not too many people on the tram now. This is a Pessa built tram, that's a Polish company, and there's a badge there saying Pessa. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, the, that's the return loop. It's there where those cars are. And there's another tram in front of us. So, we've effectively gone, that tram there is on the turning loop, and that would turn and head back towards the city centre, sort of run along over there. We're going to continue forward towards the end of Route 13. So. It's going to be interesting to see what we find. I really like it when I come to these tramways in, in Europe. You just get to the end and you're sort of on the edge of a city centre. There's lots of trees about, sort of semi-rural. It's, um, I just really enjoy this sort of thing. Are we off yet? Yeah, we're off. So we're just passing tram 874 just there. So as I say, that's on the return loop. And we're leaving, we're going right into the forest now. And see, so later on when I return, I'll be on that track, and then that tram is now moving on the return loop. This is, this is what I really like, these kind of trams like this. Just, you know, we're now off the road on our own alignment. We're effectively a light railway now. You know, it's, it's basically a light railway, but also does some street running. So this is really nice. I'm going to enjoy the journey and see what we find at the end of Route 30. the end of Route 13. So the tram's going to go off on the turn loop all around there and then it'll head back to the city centre down there. Let's go and have a little look. I can show you now the outside of the tram we just travelled in. So I sat at the back because when I go on these trams that are one-ended I always sit at the back because then you get a good view watching the other trams go the other way. So I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of the tram stop but that is where we are. Bought a day ticket, lasts 24 hours so I can ride as much as I like, so I haven't got to worry about keep looking for ticket machines. So here we are now, we've come to the front of the tram, just there. And let's have a look, see what there is to see. It's a 
was a very industrial and still is a very industrial place. So there's lots of factories, or possibly in this case, abandoned factories. I know there's a couple of coal-fired power stations in the area. So what I'm going to do, I'm just sort of going to explore really, go to the end and just, just see what I can find at the end of each route. Because it, it is quite fascinating. You never quite know what you're going to find. So I'm not sure. I think you have to get off the tram there and then to ride it back to the city centre, you get on it there. So if you're a track basher, you don't quite get to do that bit of track. But I'm, I'm not too worried about doing every little bit of track. I mean, there's just so much here to do. I just like to do the route. So what I'll do now, I'll probably ride Route 13 back to that other turning loop we came to. That's where Route 16 starts. And then where we came at that crossroads of tram lines at the beginning of the video, I shall come to there and it will tr travel south to the bottom of that branch and then I will take it from there as to what to do. So yeah, not residential area, I said abandoned factories over there. There's a petrol station, I can see a couple of church towers and uh, there's a sort of a kind of a garden stroke park in the middle of the tram loop, not quite sure what to describe it as. So yeah, this is the first end of the line we've come to. I think there's a railway as well not far from here. So I might go and have a look at that, because if I get that one back, it means I'm going to travel on the one I've just travelled on, and I try and do different ones. It's also quite, if you look at that, it's quite rough, the state of the track. I was like, well, I found out it was a bit embarrassing. I sat on the tram, and I just bought a donut, and um, it went over one of those bumps, and I got all this chocolate all over my face and hands, but I managed to, luckily, I had some serviettes to clean myself up before I recorded the next take of the video, and that's because you've got quite rough tracks like that. So, yeah, if you're coming on the trams in Upper Cecilia, I'm thinking of eating a donut. Take note. Anyway, I'm going to wait and um, for my tram, and we'll see where we go next. And here we are back at that turning loop which we came across on our way to the end of Route 13. So Route 13 continues off down there. So I've just come along on a tram. This is going to be my next tram. I've noticed they all have names as well, which is quite nice. Or at least these ones do. These Pessa free section ones have names. So. 876 is probably going to be my next tram. I'm just going to show you where Route 13 goes. It's a bit I particularly liked. Well, we saw it on the way, actually, didn't we? It's down there. See how it just runs off? Like I say, it's like a proper light railway. I've actually redone really this platform recently. And you quite often get these in Eastern Europe, these sort of huts at the end of tram routes. It's usually where the staff can perhaps go and have a break, perhaps. So, yeah, Route 16, it goes in seven minutes. There's a DMI, dot matrix indicator. So we'll have a look just over here and I'm going to go and get on that tram so yeah that so that's the platform there for route 13 if you're heading out the city centre down there and then trams on route 16 as we've seen terminate in the middle of the circle so I'm going to go and jump on that tram over there we have now arrived at the other end of the route 16 that's the tram I've just been on complete contrast look at this it's a great big sort of indoor, semi-indoor terminus. So the trams go around on a loop as they all do. You'll see another one over there. There's a couple waiting. Now, I'm not going to pronounce the name of the place, but it says up there, Katowice, and then below, that's the town we're at. Um, trams coming with a different sort. Not seen any of these on the video yet. Number 810. So I'll find out more about those ones perhaps later on in the video. Traveling along on the tram 1047, number 1047, you can see it up there in the dark. Another PESA tram. There's only about one other person on it. If you look, most of the tram is empty. So um, I'm going to go to the end of, well, it says this is the end of route. There's a screen up there, I know it's not showing very well, but this will take me to what is the current end of route 14. Although I thought route 14 went on beyond where it's terminating as a single line, which I wouldn't have done in the dark. I just thought I'd do this for the ride, see what's at the other end, and then I'm going to head back to the city centre, and the rest of the video we'll do tomorrow. One other thing I think is quite nice, if you look on the seats, you can, there's like a nice, um, the, uh, what's it called, logo of the tram company. So, I think that's it for today's tram bashing, I'll have something to eat, and then head back to where I'm staying, and I'll be out bashing a lot more tomorrow. So it's day two of my tram bash around Katowice 
and it's the upper Silesian urban area. So today I'm going to travel a further away from Katowice, the city centre where we are now. I'm going to wait for a travel and I'm going to head out to another city or town called Bytham. Um, well, I think I might find some narrow gauge railways as well. I'm not expecting them to be running, but I thought I'd go and have a look. These trams coming in now, these ones I've noticed do have a driver or have a cab each, should I say, and they have, as you can see, the platforms on that side have doors on each side. So I wonder what sort of tram I'm about to catch. Looking forward to another day of bashing around the upper Silesian urban area. Things haven't quite gone according to plan. I've ended up here. Is that one of those funny little one carriage trams? What happened? The tram I was on, 851, has terminated there, and I can see there appears to be some sort of engineering works now to connect the Katowice end of the network with the Vitam end of the network. There's two through routes. Well, I noticed the other one, the track had been dug up. I think it's in connection. They're putting a new route in down there between the two. So the tram I was on. That way, hence why they're using the double-ended trams on this route because it's the first time I've come to the end of a route, although this is only a temporary end of route where there's no return loop. So what I'm going to do now, I thought I'm just going to walk along, see what I can find and hopefully, I mean there's a, there's a whole load of tram routes down there so they must be running and just see if I can find some more trams beyond all this that are running. Well, that question was quickly answered. They're putting in a junction, so you can see tracks going that way, tracks going that way. That will go down to the other line which runs through the city centre. And just up there, I can see another tram waiting. So I've literally had to walk close. Just over there was so about less than a quarter of a mile I've had to walk between uh, where the engineering work's taking place. So maybe one day I'll come here again and we'll ride that new route when it opens. I'm going to run up there now and try and get on that tram. So I caught that tram, I've just got off it here. There's a big park here, like a theme park. I don't think it's open today. And um, it's got an Arrogate Railway, so the plan is we can have a look. So we're not gonna go into the park, because it's closed, and <laughs> probably wasn't something I would have done anyway. But we can just have a look. So it's interesting that the park, the theme park itself is there. So that's where you'd pay to go in. Now I can already see it's under some roller coasters. But this narrow gauge railway, I believe, is is here. So it doesn't appear to be running, but I think this building here might be the station. So we'll just have a look. This is just like a touristy narrow gauge railway. And if, if, it, if it was the summer, I'd come and have a ride in it. So like just about everywhere I go, I've already given myself a reason to come back here. But I don't overly see it's worth me spending a lot of time exploring it because um, I'll just do it when it's running. And obviously, do a bit of work on the station, but yeah, here we are. Here is our first narrow gauge railway, but it's not actually running. So you see, you've got a, a run round loop, and there's buffer stops. Didn't bring a tape measure, so I can't tell you what gauge it is. I'd guess it's probably hmm, two foot six, maybe, or what in, they'd, yeah, two foot six, but it'd be in a metric equivalent. There's a few roller coasters. So I think there's not really a lot else I can do here. There is also a cable car which runs, it doesn't go off a hill or anything, it basically runs flat across the park. I'm not expecting that to be running either, so probably the best thing for me is to get back on the tram stop and continue exploring the trams. I've arrived here now. I would pronounce it as Chozo, but I'm fairly sure it's probably not how you pronounce it. This is just another one of the towns served by the Upper Silesian Urban Area Tram Network. And this is quite a major interchange. It's almost like the Clapham Junction of the system. You've got all these platforms. So you've got a couple of trams there, a couple of trams there. There's an older single tram car up there. We passed two 
older tram cars earlier on, some older Polish built trams. That was good to see because I was starting to think, are they all, is this going to be a city of all PESA trams? Which, if it was, wouldn't be quite so exciting. So it seems that the PESA tram seems to be concentrated on on um, Katowice city centre, but it seems when you go further out, you get older ones like this. This looks like it's been refurbished. So I'll just let this one come in. I'm probably going to go and get a coffee and then I'm going to continue my exploration of the tram. Side, so only doors on one side, and also with it being single track, there has to be a platform on both sides of the track. There's also a lot of, as you can see, sort of park areas and forestry areas you tend to see, and then you'll see a lot of flats. Also, lots of old coal mines. I've seen numerous um, industrial railways, quite a lot of them abandoned, but one or two of them appear to still be new, so I didn't actually see any trains on them. So I'm going to continue riding this now to Bytham, and then we'll see what we can find there. Well, it was quite a fun hour riding the interurban routes of Upper Silesian urban area on this tram here. This is Bytham city centre, it's on a big loop here, so all the trams are going that way. There's actually two loops, this is this loop, there's this loop here, and there's an outer loop around the city centre, or it's, it's hard to explain, so basically you've got, it's like two circles and this part is in common with, with each. I'm going to now walk down to the railway station because that's where I'm hoping to find that narrow gauge railway. Look at that building there, all those different coloured bricks. There really are is some fantastic architecture to see here in Poland, which makes you know the riding around the trams all the more enjoyable. There's a lot of you know the sort of communist tower blocks everywhere, but you also get you know, really nice brick buildings like that, and then sort of slightly baroque buildings. Well, it's like possibly maybe an opera house or something. But look at that, I really like that building over there. So I'm going to have a little look around Byton now, if that's how you say it. And then I'm going to go and find the railway station. So I got off the tram just down there. And this is you rebuilding the station. So you can't these steps up to the narrow gauge platform, which is funny. But I don't actually think it's the trains running. I'm getting the impression that was the main railway station. But they seem to be rebuilding it. So I think there would have been an underpass down there. But that's currently closed, so that's why they've sent us up here and you have to walk along the narrow gauge platform. It's so like I say, this is a heritage line, it doesn't appear to be running today, so uh, perhaps we'll come here again in the future to ride this railway line. It's, it's quite a long line, it, it runs for quite a while out into the countryside, so maybe in the future we could do that. There's signs see it's pointing you to the railway station platforms, so that's the narrow uh, gauge line going that way. So, um, I'm not sure some two blokes standing there drinking, one of them shouted something at me, so I'm just going to get away from that area. Um, probably not really harm the through, so to ask me what I was doing. Uh, anyway, so it appears that was the station, and then this is the main railway station. Strange entrance to a railway station. So, with it all being a bit of a building site, um, whether we're going to see any trains, I'm not sure. So I think this is the current station. It's funny, this is quite a big city. And at the moment, it appears that that is the only station they have. Very strange. Um, yes, it's a bit odd, this. So yeah, I think that was the station over there. I'm crossing, God knows how many running lines. There's just so many railways around here, it's hard to witness. I've already sat down and studied what's what, which lines are main lines, which ones, you know, are the sort of more suburban lines. There's clearly a lot of work going on here. As you can say, that, I think, was the railway station. It's not quite what I hoped for, because I thought, well, 
I would possibly have got some to eat, like it's lunchtime now. Katowice, there's loads of places to eat at the railway station. There doesn't seem to be here. So I'm probably just going to have to walk into Vitam town centre and find somewhere to, to eat. And then I've got more routes to explore. What I might do is later on, the narrow gauge line winds its way north from here. It probably crosses the tram route, so we might be able to find it. But as for trying to see any locos now, unless I can work out where the depot is, I'm not so sure. But anyway, what I did want to show you was this single box here. Look at that. It's built across the track. I really like that. So I'm going to go to the town centre now and see what I can find to me. Well, here we are in Whiteham City Centre. This is the larger of the two loops, I said, which circled the city centre. Now, once again, engineering work has forfed my plans to do certain routes I plan to do. But here, there's quite a lot going on. Now, so this is a single track loop which trams run around um, Antigua. This branch here, this goes to Route 38. Now, I'm not sure if Route 38 is running or not, but Route 38 is unusual and it runs as a separate system. So the track that goes to Route 38 doesn't actually have any scheduled passenger services. So up there, I should find Route 38. And it looks like it's single track. Possibly one tram just runs up and down it. And uh, that, was, that, that sounds quite exciting. But I also want to do Route 6, because I think Route 6 has got the best chance of seeing any locos on the narrow gauge line, which we saw earlier. So that's where, that's the outer loop. This way goes to Route 38. So I'm just going to go and see what I can find, really. It doesn't look like I'm doing Route 38. All down here, which I said is somewhere Route 38 must have started. I'm not sure, I haven't seen any evidence of a return loop, but then, as we found, there are some double-ended trams, so it doesn't necessarily mean there has to be a return loop. I'm gonna do across here. So this would be, somewhere along here would be Route 38. You can see there's some track being laid there. I'm wondering, the fact that that slight, looks slightly off center, maybe they're relaying it to double track. I'm not too sure. So Route 38 is going to remain a mystery. There's a bit of old track just in the road there, so it's going to remain. I'll have to come back. Uh, I knew I was never going to do the whole network, even with it all running. Um, the time I got here, you just, it's just such a huge network, so I'm just trying to do the best bits. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wander back down here, and so I'm going to have a go, see if I can do Route 6. Looks so like I found a prison, or at least a building that was a prison. So that is the city centre loop. Now it continues around there, but trams heading out of the city on, I think it's routes 19, 49 and 6, would turn left and go off up over that bridge there. That's double track. I'm getting the impression that the loop going that way has become bi-directional. And what I'm hoping to find is a tram on route 6. It'll take me to the end of route 6, where, like I said, I might find some narrow gauge interesting rolling stock. So I'm just going to have to wait and see what happens now. although it's actually Route 10, or my map said Route 6, but we'll call it Route 10. Slight problem, I didn't realise it was the end, and I've managed to 
ride on onto the return loop, which sounds like a good track bash, but I'm stuck. Look, press the doors, they won't open. There's two more trams in front of me, so I might be stuck on here now for a while because I can try and get the attention of the driver. But yeah, somewhere near here is Narragos Road, which we're going to go and look for though once I get off this tram. I'm off the tram now, managed to get the driver's attention as he was going to his tea break. I don't think he was best pleased. So if you come here, don't try and ride the return loop as fun as it is. Over there, there's a colliery. Now, when I was waiting on the tram, the pit head gears, the wheels were going round, so it's obviously still in use. I've come off the beaten track a little bit from that um, end of the tram stop. There's the road to the tram terminated just before that bridge. There's a station there, a standard gauge station, and here, here's the narrow gauge line. Don't think I'm going to see any trains. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to head back back towards the where the end of the tram route, route was and see if I can find the depot, that's where we might see something. In the meantime, we might see a train on the main line, somehow don't. All the trains seem to be not a lot going on, unless I went to the main, one of the main stations. Don't seem to be that lucky for seeing many trains today. Anyway, let's go and see what we can find. I followed the little narrow gauge track up to here. It seemed as a bit of an unofficial footpath. I could see a few dog walkers heading this way, so I just sort of followed them. There's another massive coal mine there, and that looks like an old power station over there. Now, as for the narrow gauge line, looks like there was a line that went that way. We've come to a station. That's where we are. There's a signal box, more excitingly, there's a couple of steamboat crews up there, so this is a bit of an unexpected turn. I'm not sure if I'm really supposed to go and have a look, but I'm just going to go and see what I can see. So let's have a look up there. steam engines, a few diesel locos. There's a steam engine over there at the rake of a, a load of wagons. So if it's just worked out one of the coal mines. Now I've got another steam engine over there going by its works but it's built in 1955. I don't know if I'm really supposed to be here but there are people about and they've not said anything and I have spotted people walking through the yard you know just on their way home from the shopping so I don't think it's kind of quite as frowned upon as it would be in the UK if you were to just go wandering around. This is like a little rail car here. So we've got a few of these, those Romanian diesels. Some quite big steam engines there. There's another one there. See, look, there's more people just down there just wandering through. I like this rail car. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great fun to have a ride up the line. Look, there's evidently no passenger trains running today. The scene I do particularly like is this here. If that steam locker wasn't quite so rusty, you know, it could look as though it's, it's just come out the coal mine with a load of coal wagons. So this is great, it's just like a real time warp here. I'm going to wander off down there because there's other people coming from down there. I've got to find my way back to the tram stop and head back towards city centre. This may well be the fastest I've ever been on a tram. Um, this is what you get with these interurban lines. We're probably out in the countryside now. We've headed further west from Byton to another town or city which I'm not even going to try and pronounce its name. But there, there's Route 3 which runs north to south, mainly all single track. Looks very exciting, goes to more coal mining towns. This is really good fun, I'm really enjoying this part of the tram bash. It feels like we're more than a light railway. It does go around the corners quite wildly. And by the way, this is one of the Alstom trams I think I'm on now. So these are not as new as the, the Pessa trams, but they're obviously newer than some of the other ones. They are articulated. So this is great. I'm just going to continue to enjoy the journey and see what we find in the next town these interurban lines take us to. So the place I said I was going to, which I wasn't sure how to pronounce, is called Zamshka, and I'm here in the town centre. So I came up there. Now there's a tram route going that way. That will, that's routes one and four, which I probably will do later. That will take us to the extremity of the network. Now the railway station is not far from here, but just found some abandoned tram lines there. So it's obviously another route which they closed at some point. So it just shows that this system has expanded quite a lot. My plan is possibly tomorrow is to go and find the newest part of the network, but that's down the other extremity. I just noticed on this building here, See that there? I think that might be what the tram wires would have once been hooked into. So, you know, the wire would have come out to hold up the wires. I might, I might be wrong, but I think that's possibly what it is. 
I'm going to have a wander around this little town, or big town, and uh, then I'm going to do tram route 3 is my next plan. The end of route three and this time i actually got to go around the turning loop without staying on when i shouldn't the tram goes around the loop so i've been traveling on two of these older i believe they're polish built trams and then in front of me is an alston built tram which um i could use to get back i'm not sure i might go for a little walk there's a railway over there something just to go and have a look but as you can see there's not a lot here i filmed the whole route i'm going to put that on a separate video so if you'd like to see the route because it really is very off the beaten track have a look at link on screen now. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a look at the railway station. I'm not expecting to see much. If I do, I'll either put it in this or another video. And then I'm gonna head back towards the city centre. And on, I'll see here. I think that's a closed railway station. Little signal box, signal box number 17. But unless the gates go down anytime soon, I'm gonna head back and catch the tram, as I said, back towards the city centre. I just got off the tram there. Now, what's interesting on this section of line, single track, when the tram stops, cars just seem to know they stop. There's no traffic lights. They just will stop while people get on and off. I also noticed that on that branch, there was a level crossing and there was no traffic lights or anything. People just seemed to know they had to stop. Now, the reason I've got off at this stop, I wanted to do one of those single line in the middle of the street stops. That, by the way, I understand is the hospital, so, and the stop is named after the hospital. There's a statue here now. As I said, there's a lot of coal mining. You can see he's a, a coal miner. You can see the lamp in his hand. Now, around here, I've seen various ones of these displayed, but to actually find one I can show you, because some of them have been you know, behind fences and everything. There's obviously was, with a coal mine, lots and lots of narrow-gauge railways, above ground and underground and underground there were probably miles of them and here is one of the locos plinths here in this park now looks like it was overhead you can see there was a pantograph and i believe this here this is what the miners would have traveled in to the coal face so imagine sitting in that it's tiny must be two foot gauge maybe i should bring my tape measure shouldn't I? but look at it it's it's uh can't imagine it's been the most exciting ride but you'll be claiming an interesting low coast for haulage. I don't know how many of them were down there, probably thousands. Obviously you cannot have steam in a coal mine, so it has to be electric. You can see where the driver would have sat. It looks like there would have been a handle here and the driver would have driven it through the long dark tunnels. Now, I mentioned that this loco would have uh, taken people minus to the coal face. On the other side of this little square, there's a 
machine that you would have seen at the coal face. Now, if we look across over there, that machine there is what would have cut at the coal face, I believe. So let's go and have a look at that. Look at it. It's, it's pretty big. And I think these are like the teeth. So they're just spun round and round, cutting their way through. Yeah. Well, that is a, a beast of a machine. Look at this. So these, these teeth would have ground away at the coal face. You can see it's like a sort of screw. So I suppose as the coal was caught up, it would go that way. It's, uh, it has these huge chains inside it. There's like a lower one and an upper one. I'm not sure what happened here in this bit here or, or no did it go that's it it had gone forwards that way yeah that's it it would have it would have cut forwards like that so you've got an upper one or a lower one and an upper one and then if we have a look on this side so yeah the coal must have somehow gone into here it's um I'm not entirely sure how it worked but yeah i get it would have cut the coal anyway that's the important thing so wow what a machine that was so, and there is still coal mining going on here as I mentioned earlier, I've seen the pit head gears turning, so it can, coal mining continues in this area. So down below us, well not literally here, but when we were further out, down below us, these machines would have been at work. I'm gonna now walk back towards the town center and um, I'm probably then gonna catch a tram. It's gonna get dark soon, so probably not gonna do too much more bashing because it's not too much point doing it in the dark. And I'll head back to Katowice, have dinner, and then tomorrow we're gonna go in the other direction. So. I think this is it for today. So just when I said I wasn't going to do any more today, I was just going to head back. I was on my way back. I'm on this rather interesting section here. They seem to be relaying one line. But I have, I've got to get out and walk back because I spotted something which I simply cannot ignore. I spotted something from the, the tram. I'm going to go back and have a look. I'll show you what it is in a second. So, this is this currently single track section because they're relaying it's so this track here is being relayed as we can see there now it's it's quite good in a way i spotted what i spotted because it means we can have a look at this but this wasn't the reason for getting out when i really thought i was heading back to the city center to have dinner as i was going along i looked out the window out of the darkness i saw this building all lit up and then i saw db cargo i thought oh something to do with railways it must be db's main offices continuing to look out the window not really expecting anything i got a really nice surprise when i found this a kriegslok so these are german built steam locos kriegslok it basically means war locomotive it might could be a class 50 not the british class 50 but the older um version the kriegslok the class 52 is basically an updated uh, for the war locomotive so it might be one or the other I'll, by the time this video is published I will know exactly what it is but it's it's either a Kriegslok or a Class 52 it's great to see see it so Poland had quite a lot of them we've seen them in various videos I saw one only a couple of weeks ago in Riga at the railway museum of course that was a five foot gauge Kriegslok so I'm really pleased to see this this has really made my evening but I am now going to walk back beside the um relay tram lines to the darkest tram stop ever and wait for tram to take me back to Kazowice but this was worth getting out for so um yeah let, I'm gonna marvel at it for a bit and then I'm catching the tram back to Kazowice been refurbished this one hasn't I also noticed that obviously this doesn't have maquettes on the seats 
So was that a passing loop or were we back on double track? Um, I think we might be back on double track. Anyway, the, um, the, the more modern ones, or the, the ones that we just passed, some of them have a moquette of a, pit, a colliery pit head gear on the seat, which I think is fantastic. So I'm just going to continue riding this old tram through the dark until I get back to Kadavitsa.